you know, we've all run into this situation before where you're working on a couple of files and you're really proud of the progress that you're making. But at the same time, you don't want to make them part of the next commit, but the next commit has to happen. Maybe you've fixed a bug, maybe been told to update the dev branch. And while you don't want to include those changes in the next commit at the same time, you don't want to have to delete those files. So what do you do? Well, that is where the git stash command comes in. It allows you to take changes that you've made since the last commit, store them somewhere outside of your working directory and not in a git commit. And then you can go on, do your commits, do your pushes and do your pulls. And then a little bit later, you can pop or apply those changes from the stash back onto your working directory. It's an awesome tool and awesome command to use. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor in chief over at theserverside.com and I have to be one of the world's biggest Git advocates. In fact, I got a couple of two hour tutorials on Git and GitHub, Git and GitLab, Git and Bitbucket. And if you're using any of those technologies and you want a deep dive, please check those tutorials out. But for now, I want to talk to you about git stash. I want to show you a git stash example. I want to show you the difference between git stash pop and git stash apply. I want to show you how to resolve git stash merge conflicts. And maybe, just maybe, if we've got enough time, I might show you how to stash untracked files. But starting off with a simple git stash example, that's what we're going to do next. So let's do a little example of how the git stash command works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new git repository here and then I'm going to add a file, add a commit, and then I'm going to add a flaky file and stash it. But to start off, I got to run that git init command because you know it's better to get in it than to be kicked out of it, I guess. And there we go. We've got that dot git folder representing the git repository. And I don't know, I'm going to add a file here. I'll just add the requisite alpha.txt file, do the git add, do the git commit dash m first commit. You know the dance here. And there we go. Now we've got a nice rich git commit history, right? So it's not that rich, but we've got a file in there at least. So we've now got a git commit history. Now, let's say you go in there and you look at that alpha.txt file and you say, you know what? Um, we need to write hello in there as we get close to our, our little hello world. So we're going to edit that alpha.txt file. Then who knows, maybe at the same time we'll add bravo.txt because, you know, we need the bravo.txt file. And then, you know, as you're doing the work, you do your git add, maybe prepare to do a git commit, but boom, all of a sudden someone says to you, you know what, you need to fix that bug in alpha. You need to add a new file, Charlie, and we need you to, to, to update the, the branch and get these in. And you're like, well, but I've been making changes to alpha. I've been adding files like Bravo. Um, I don't want to delete those changes. In fact, it'd be tough to keep track of them, but at the same time, I don't want to include them in the next commit. So what do you do? Well, what you do is you do a git stash and you push all of your changes since the previous commit into the stash. So I say git stash push, and you notice a couple of things happen. First of all, that bravo.txt file goes away. That's been stashed. And even if I look at this alpha.txt file, you notice that the changes that I've made, hello, are now gone. So what I can do now is, I don't know, maybe change that to world, right? It was hello, now it's world. Maybe come over here and touch charlie.txt to add a new file. Remember we added Bravo before, now I create charlie, I do a git add dot, I do a git commit dash m, I guess that's the second commit with charlie. Charlie's usually my third commit, but whatever. So we do that second commit and now, everything looks good. I do the old git ref log and we can even see a little bit of action in there, but I've got a nice rich git commit history. That's for sure. Now, what do you do? Well, now you're like, okay, I did that commit. Maybe I even push these changes to a remote GitHub or GitLab repository. I don't know, but you want to go back and you want to capture those changes that you, you had in there before. So what do you do? You just say, you go in, you say git stash pop and you pop that stash back into your environment. So you can actually see that Bravo has now been added. And if we actually go into alpha.txt and reload it, 
well, there's actually a little bit of a merge conflict here. Remember, the stash had the word hello in it. Uh, the update, the bug fix, had the word world in it. Right now it's saying there's a, a little bit of a conflict there, but that's not a problem, right? You can just, you know, one said hello, the other said world. I know how that dance goes. I know how that story ends. We just now change that and update that to hello world, do the git add dot, do the git commit dash m. I don't know, what's that, our third commit? I don't know, something like that. And now, boom, you've got those changes that you stash now on your local file system by saying git stash pop and boom. Now we've got the best of both worlds, right? We were able to, I don't know, maybe fix that bug. No one saw the work that we were doing. Then after we've done our commit, I don't know, we've pulled those changes back out of the git stash and now we've got them on our file system. And so there you go. That's how easy it is to use that git stash command. And that even showed you how to resolve a git stash merge conflict when they appear. Super easy, just go into the conflicting file edit it, make some changes, make some updates, do a save, and then do your commit, and life is good. Now you did see that I used the git stash pop command. There's also a git stash apply command. The difference between those two, I'm gonna show you next. Now if you're working with git stash, you'll quickly find out that there's two ways to pull your changes from the stash back into your working directory. There's git stash pop and there's git stash apply. So common question is what's the difference between git stash pop and git stash apply? Well, it's fairly straightforward. I've got a, a repository here that I've been working on in this example. If I do a git ref log, you can see the, the history, a few commits in there, and even the stash, which is being represented at head two as a reset, in fact. Um, and I'm going to add a new file. I'm going to go touch devo.txt, and then I'm going to do a git add, and then I'm going to do a git stash with the message get stash push <laughs> the message are we not men are we not devs that would be more gender neutral sorry it's a 1970s punk song if you didn't know so all of a sudden i've now got that file in the stash and it's removed from my file system it's pushed into the stash and if i do a little git stash list command it'll say hey we've got uh, two items in the stash we've got the are we not men one and uh looks like we've got some work in progress from the first commit as well now let's just say i want to get that change back that devo.txt file. I've got some uncontrollable urge and I need that back on the file system. Sorry, another song reference. Um, how do we do it? Uh, well, one way to do it is to use the git stash pop command. Another way to do it is to use git stash apply. So let me use git stash pop right now. I say git stash pop and all of a sudden, boom, devo.txt comes back onto my file system. Now, watch this, git stash list. You'll notice that the top of the stash, the, the last thing that I put on the stash has been pulled into my working directory and removed from the stash. So when you do that git stash pop, it takes what's on the stash and it applies to your working directory and it deletes the stash that it pulled in from the stash list. Now, apply doesn't do the delete. That's the key difference. So let me touch echo.txt here and then do a git add command. And then, I don't know, why don't we git stash that command and call it the dash m the echo stash, right? Okay, so now all of a sudden we have stashed those files. If I say git stash list, and notice that it took both Devo and uh, Echo out of there because there's there hasn't been any commit since uh, I started uh, adding files here. So whenever you do a git stash, it takes all of the files that have changed since the previous commit and it puts them in the stash. But notice if I say git stash list here, it says uh, the echo stash, that has got echo and Devo in it, um, is the uh, 
one waiting on the stack of stashes to be popped in. But watch, if I say git stash apply, boom, devo and echo.txt come in. But at the same time, if I'd say git stash list, notice that the echo stash hasn't been removed. So that's the key difference. When you do the git stash pop, it takes the changes from the stash that you're popping on um, and it then deletes that stash from the list of stashes. With the apply, it takes the files from that stash, it applies them to your working directory, but it doesn't actually delete that stash. It keeps it there just in case you want to use it for the future. So there you go. That's the difference between git stash pop and git stash apply. One of the minor annoyances people have with the git stash command is that a git stash will only shelve changes that have been made to files that are already tracked by git or files that have been added to the git index. If you've got untracked files, by default, they're not stashed. So for example, uh, I'm gonna create a new file here. I'm gonna touch fred.txt, as unchristian as that sounds, and I'm not gonna add it to the git index. I'm gonna try and do a git stash, git stash, push and it says hey there's no local changes to save and you know there's changes i know there's changes but apparently git doesn't so how can you stash untracked changes well it's super easy to do you just say git stash and use the dash u command for including untracked changes i think you can actually say dash dash include dash untracked but dash use a lot easier to do so now i do that and boom notice that fred disappeared um but not completely gone if i do a git stash list you'll notice that <laughs> Well, there is a git stash in there, and that's where Fred is hiding. I can do some commits, I can do pushes, I can do pulls and fetches, all of that cool git porcelain stuff. And when I want Fred to resurface again, I just have to say git stash pop, and boom. As you can see, Fred gets added in there. May as well add Fred to the index, git commit dash m add fred as that git commit message and boom all of a sudden we now have a nice rich git commit history and now fred is part of that and you got to see the fact that well we were able to uh, include that untracked file in the stash and by the way uh, if you ever want to see what's in the stash you can always say git stash list and if you do have a bunch of stuff in there you can always say git stash clear and that'll clear out the uh, git stash and all of the stashes in there just in case you've been throwing a lot of things in there over time and you want to clear it out a little bit so there you go that is a whirlwind tour of that git stash command i hope you you learned a thing or two there really is a convenient command that can help you out by the way as i mentioned before i've got a couple of two hour tutorials on git and github git and gitlab git and bitbucket so if you really want a deeper dive onto these git technologies it it behooves you to go and check those out as i mentioned i am the editor-in-chief over at the server so head over there we've got a lot of great tutorials on git and github and devops tools and java and scrum and agile and speaking of programming languages i've been doing a lot of work in mojo lately it's a, a new programming language that's set to really push python out of the picture once it uh, goes ga so uh, i've got a newsletter that talks all about that if you want to keep up with the latest software development uh, sign up for that newsletter links in the description i'm cameron mcnz on twitter so if you enjoyed this tutorial why don't you find me over there tweet at me x at me i guess is what they call it now um i'd love to hear from you and uh by the way you can see you got a couple of books in the back there and uh if you're into hibernate i wrote hibernate made easy if you're into the simpsons i wrote a book called pickering is springfield i'm also working with a, a young freelancer these days called named darcy to who wrote the scrum master certification guide so if you're interested in getting scrum certified or you know someone who is check that out and i guess finally if you're watching this on the youtube the last thing i would suggest is that you subscribe on the youtube <laughs>